Destiny River. NTV. Turning on your world. Program Guide. Listen, Evelyn, I've been thinking about your preposition. Sigenda kujayu kwa tutawana. So what are you saying? A lying, cheating, hope. We need to give the body what the body needs. Man cannot live on bread and kisses alone, right? The truth is, I don't know if I'll ever understand her. Whatever gang you claim, whatever hood you're from, this is your hood now. Hustle, touch that line and get back. I want to be a Mustang coach. I want to show people I can play. My kids have been in this program for three years. can bring everybody in parliament as long as they can wake up and vote for their name. As long as the voters exercise their rights to elect their leaders, there was no need for term limits in Uganda. I know him. I know how he operates. I know how he thinks. There are, there are ways you can go around this obstacle. Why should I conduct myself as if I am a Muyai? It's absolutely true. I admire the President Museveni. Is the ICC a first court targeting African leaders? You cannot tell me that the whole trouble Kenya had revolved about only the two individuals. The money is not in the budget of this financial year. You can't beat God. You see God is polygamous also. Look at Je Jeremiah chapter 31. The, the security of this country will largely depend on the contribution that the people make. Sights and sounds is brought to you. We went to the movies. I forgot my wallet, but my brother sent me money. I pretended not to notice. Every day was a celebration.
Sights and Sounds is brought to you. We went to the movies. I forgot my wallet, but my brother sent me money. I pretended not to notice. Every day was a celebration. <laughs> Tonight on NTV. I'm sorry. Chris, you're not meeting that woman. You're not leaving this house. They treated you well, huh? Did you eat well? The doctors took very good care of your dear Solano. He's doing fine. No one believed how quick he recovered. <laughs> Recently, my son and I haven't been getting along very well. Father and son issues. You don't have to explain, Max. <laughs> I'll sort it out with your son. Tonight on NTV. Street Live in association with Reham WhatsApp. Feel it within. Natanika business here and getting me to a local. I can't cut it. No, 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 Ganeon Street Live in association with Reham WhatsApp. Feel it within. And the change of government won't stop a thing. I've run out of fingers counting the number of multinationals sitting up here. What about the three companies that announced their plans to launch last week? I say they're shortly. Me, I'd be looking to sell. At what price? More. Much, much more. Uh, I don't know who you are, or how you know these things. But one thing I'm sure of, you're in the wrong job. Here, call me tomorrow at 9 o'clock in the morning. I'd like to hear more from you. Are you ready for your big break? The East African, understanding the region. NTV, turning on your world. Good afternoon. Welcome to NTV at One. My name is Malcolm Sima. Let's begin with the headlines first. The Ghana Bureau of St Statistics prepares for the 10th national census. Social media will be used to reach the masses. Also coming up, a house made in Busia is brutally murdered in a case that locals suspect was an inside job. Yeah. 
and acrimony in Rengo as local leaders cite discrimination within the NRM party. This is on TV at one. The Uganda Bureau of Statistics says it has begun preparing for this year's national census and the 10-day exercise is scheduled to run from the 28th of August to 6th of September. The officials say the census will incorporate social media platforms to ease the data collection process. It is only the census, through the census, that you're able to get an accurate count of the people where they are, where their needs are. It is August from 27th for 10 days. We conclude on 6th. And uh, re first results will come out in October. Those who say you are counted, you die. We want to address people's values, privacy, and so on. And uh, use community and social media as much as possible. There are close 600,000 Ugandans today using Facebook. An even bigger number must be now on Twitter. Then, of course, there are blogs. I think those are still very popular. All these are platforms that you can uh, employ uh, while discussing the issue of, of the census. Civil society organizations and government institutions are engaged in dialogue to find ways to support the Senior Citizens Grant, which will benefit elders above the age of 65. And this is under the Social Protection Platform, which states for the social protection of elders as a fundamental human right, as well as revitalizing social networks to restore self-esteem and dignity among the poor and vulnerable. So in the next few weeks, months and months, we'll have a but I want to support the view that we need a policy. We really need a policy to guide us. Like we, we are saying the elderly. But if we are calling it social protection, persons with disability are disadvantaged. Actually, they have been arguing that they are more disadvantaged than some of the older people. We are talking of, of 65 years. But you know our... Life expectancy, especially in Uganda, is around now 48 for women and 45 for men. Now, if you put at 65 years, really, to me, I see 65 is high. Why don't you reduce it at least to 50 or 55? Minister of Gender, how far are you with this policy? Because for me, this policy is going to save us of two critical things. One, now there is a bid to liberalize the social security fund which is contributory and for me I thought we would not consider this liberalization of NSSF funds until we get a social protection policy because social security funds are part of social protection so why are they rushing into liberalizing the social protection fund when actually they know that in the kitchen there is a policy coming at the moment 70% uh, of older persons in Uganda uh, take care of vulnerable children, of orphans, and they have a lot of challenges that they face. And it's very important that as a country, we have a focus for the older persons, because these are people that contribute, actually that have contributed vehemently in uh, developing our country. And really it is very important that as the government of Uganda, even at now this age, when they cannot be in position, to, to now work and contribute more funds for the development of the country. To ask you for sugar and soap, they are parts. This is a picture that we took when we went to do this in uh, Ayamai. Now, KFS took up the greater part of discussions on the Changwanzi resolution in Rango district. Some NRM supporters and local leaders were prevented from attending the meeting organized to discuss President Museveni's sole candidature. The two members of parliament, uh, Bukoto Midwest MP Isaac Sejava and Rengo woman MP Gatrod Nakavira, insisted that the meeting had been organized for NRM mainstream elders, parish committees, cadres, and opinion leaders. <laughs>
By the way, these people who, whom we have left outside are innocent because they were just misled. Eh? They, are, they were misled. But the problem, the problem we are having is that some of these rules, like the NRM guidelines, are in English, and some of our our leaders at, at district levels cannot read English. But there could have been, I suspect, there could have been some misinformation somewhere, which was caused by some members in the party who called in everybody. The purpose of this meeting was to disseminate information from Changkwanzi of the Changkwanzi resolution. We run up to 26 cent drama. The Inspectorate of Government has released a report on investigations into the mismanagement of millions of shillings at the National Social Security Fund. The report accuses the fund stop managers of misusing public money and violating the laid down procedures of disposing land owned by NSSF. Some of the report's findings show that the former NSSF corporate secretary incurred a bill of over 8 million shillings in making personal phone calls. It also faults the former managing director for irregularly disposing of the NSSF land located on block 4, plot 434 on Namirembe Road. The father blames NSSF for investing in Umeme without seeking advice from the Attorney General, as stipulated in Article 119, Section 5 of the Constitution. Recommendations. The IGG wants the former corporate secretary to refund 1.5 million shillings that was spent on personal calls to his spouse while attending training in the United Kingdom. He recommends that all disposals of land by the NSSF should strictly follow procedures laid down in the PPDA Act. NSSF must always obtain clearance from the Attorney General before entering into transactions in respect of purchase of shares. A woman in Busia district has been found dead in her home where she worked as a house help. Slavia on Yara's death occurred late at night. And sparking, of course, conspiracy theories among residents about the killing being the handwork of a people known to her. A maid in Busia called Slivia Onyala was found dead last night in the house where she worked. Her body was found on a mattress stained with blood. Slavia's employer is reported to have been sleeping in a separate room at the time the horrific incident happened. Even the house was locked, they did not break any mirror, but we realized that the girl was dying. Uh, they have killed the girl. So, to be honest, the owner of the house have information to give the police. The woman who brought her, she's there around. She's responsible for the death of the girl. The deceased had spent only two weeks at this place. Hmm? The body has been taken to Busia Health Center Mochari for post-mortem. Many more stories coming up on MTV at one, including more sanctions from the US and Europe on Russia. adds fabric conditioners to washing powder to give you sunlight two in one for sensational cleaning and fragrance that lasts and lasts and lasts sunlight two in one sensational cleaning and showgirls clean safe user friendly with distinct features that assist a customer smell any leaks gas and cylinders now available at all points of sale at an affordable price theft can not only cause destruction of properties and power outages but can also lead to death and report power theft. It's a crime and affects everyone.
Let's unite against power theft and save lives. Our contractors all risk policy covers your contract works, workers, equipment and machinery for every unforeseen loss or damage. Let's shield your projects. Insurance Company of East Africa, ICEA, standing by you. Running out of airtime can happen to anyone. The next time you recharge, simply dial star 161 hash to get going again. On the next episode of La Patrona. We need to give the body what the body needs. Man cannot live on bread and kisses alone, right? The truth is, I don't, I don't know, know if I'll, I'll ever understand, understand her. <sighs> That's right, Guerra. The commissioner and I already spoke. And now, dear mother, it's your turn. You're no one here, commissioner. You're nothing but a common thug. <laughs> and you're just a sad woman who thinks she owns everyone and everything in this town. You're mistaken. I'm the boss here. Does it bother you? <laughs> La Patrona. At Orange, we know that running out of airtime can happen to anyone. That's why we bring you Wet us in. Simply dial star 161 hash to get going again. Convenience changes with Orange. Today, changes with Orange. Welcome back. The Kapala Capital City Authority has received 13 incubators worth 108 million shillings from Kenya Commercial Bank. KCC Executive Director Jennifer Musisi says this will boost the services in the city owned hospitals. And statistics from the authority show that over 2,000 babies are delivered monthly in the city. And these babies, uh, or as require incubators, are usually referred to Mulago Hospital. <laughs> You're giving us brand new equipment, adding value to the lives of our population, but also adding value to what we are doing. That we're going to use them uh, to, to save as many lives as possible these two babies. We already have a neonatal uh, ward in Kiseni where we keep these little newborn babies. And this is going to add to that. But because we also have other health centers in the city, we're going to take some and put them in the other health centers so that everybody come again with a baby that needs to use it as they'll be supported. As it, we are happy to partner with the KCCA in this initiative because uh, as much as we have the money to donate to this initiative, they have the infrastructure and the staff and the capacity to make sure that it is uh, utilized in the best possible manner. Health experts in South Africa are curbing spread of malaria by applying a host of interventions that includes trapping mosquitoes using pots, buckets, and window panes. Mosquito trapping aims at reducing the population of mosquitoes by capturing the egg-laying females. Floris Nariimba, our award-winning health reporter, has more in the third series of our malaria features. Over 10,000 people in South Africa died of a severe malaria epidemic in 1932. Basically brought uh, uh, KwaZulu-Natal to a halt. A behavioral study conducted by an entomologist back then revealed that female mosquitoes rest after feeding on blood. So the expert began trapping them using tools known as flitting pumps. Flitting out these houses uh, you know, uh, every four days, they stopped that epidemic. And then when DDT came in, they applied you know, a long-lasting insecticide, i.e. DDT, to the walls. And that worked even better than the, the um, flit pumps with the pyrethroid. Um, sorry, it is pyrethrum in those days. It's uh, an extract of the pyrethrum daisy. Keith Hargreaves, an entomologist at the Malaria Control Program in Josini, compares the challenges of containing malaria to the hassle a parent goes through to raise a problem child. He has been hunting for the female mosquitoes for decades. We've been spraying here for 56 years and we still have them. 
case says the main worries that mosquitoes bite both indoors and outdoors. Outside bite infection we can do nothing about. Uh, we can kill the ones that come indoors fine and got a handle on them but not on the ones outdoors. And so they keep laying traps. Window trap or the exit trap. First you must touch it because some of them will be resting on the corner and won't Move. Mosquito trapping is something that has been going on for decades here in South Africa. In fact, it started as early as 1932 and it seems to be working perfectly for them. Now, the community has been greatly involved because these traps are set up on their windows and around their environment. So they understand why these people have to come in to collect these mosquitoes when they have been trapped. Come and come and see what is eating you. I said, oh, this is the one is dangerous and that one is not dangerous. I said, wow, yes. please put all this thing around my house. You know, the method is primitive, but it works. If you have a switch off the candle, the first light that is coming, it will shine on it, and then it shows there is a hole that so that they are trying to run away, and then they are trapped inside, and then you can collect now. The team must be up by four in the morning to collect the trapped mosquitoes. You can examine them first, okay, then after you put them on the cup, and then we use the cotton wool so they won't run away. Any information collected is recorded. We want to know how many mosquitoes rest inside and bite people and come out early in the morning. Some of them, they come out because they want to lay eggs. Some of them, they eat bread inside and rest outside. The KwaZulu Natal Provincial Malaria Program Manager says mosquito trapping is an area that needs more strengthening. It helps us a lot in terms of vector surveillance. That is not necessarily like a strategy to reduce the number of mosquitoes. A more robust program that is a result of a collaboration involving the National Institute of Communicable Diseases, NICD, the Vector Biology Unit in Johannesburg, and the malaria program in KwaZulu Natal in Josini has proved effective in collecting the base data for a sterile male release. Countless mosquitoes are to be bred. A mosquito mates only once in its life. And if they mate with a sterile male, they, they won't lay eggs, or the eggs will be sterile, they won't hatch. So um, this is the plan. We'll re release millions of male, um, sterile male mosquitoes in this area. And hopefully um, we'll eliminate rabiensis in this way.